All right, so the other day I tweeted out a message about game developer networking and one of the responses, which I'm not calling out the person in particular, more so it helped highlight some issues, but somebody responded they don't really network and that they had some bizarre experiences that helped me realize that there's some misunderstandings about how networking works. So today, three quick tips on networking. Now, obviously, I think you probably know, this is about networking in the sense of meeting other people, whether you're in game development, business, whatever, not networking like TCP, IP, bitrate, all that kind of stuff. Part of why the person had a neg negative experience with networking was that he had gone to a few different kind of places and just kind of wasn't really finding the value from it. It was a lot of oftentimes students without uh, jobs yet or as people who like maybe weren't offering good deals or whatever. And the thing about networking is it's got to be long term. So that's the first point of three. Uh, it's not a game for the impatient. Uh, people who are expecting short term immediate turnaround from it. It's just not how it works. You're going to at best wind up working with somebody else who's got the patience to develop their network but it takes time. Those same people today who are students without jobs yet are on an active trajectory where they're likely to wind up with jobs someplace, which means that in the future, longer term, not like it's the only reason you should network with them, but they may actually still be a useful point of contact, connection into wherever they might wind up. That most valuable people in my network by at least sort of market terms or even by access to who else they know are people who, when I met them far earlier on, maybe literally five or 10 or 15 years ago in some cases, they were at the time also students who had not found jobs yet, but now they're adults further along in their life and their path and, uh, you know, number of promotions later. Same thing with people who were at the time entry level that now have stuck with it and I've stuck with my path and in the process. That's how you develop your network. It's not necessarily from this like, oh, you know, you walk into these places and suddenly a CEO somewhere is just there trying to offer you opportunities. It's just not how networking really works. It really is predominantly peer level networking. It's trying to find people who are about your level. Now, secondarily about that, uh, in terms of how you develop the network, you know, I mentioned it's not like you walk somewhere and someone just offers you some sort of great deal. It's really fundamental about what you can do for them. And this is because it's people are going to remember you, people are going to keep you in contact, people are going to accept your friend request or send your friend request or follow you online, etc. based on what you've done for them. There's a tendency to want to wanna get out there and just try to figure out what they can do for you. And that's understandable because that's obviously your motivation to an extent, to go to the effort to get out there and go to these events where it can be kind of awkward or uncomfortable or inconvenient or just not what you'd like to do that evening. But it really comes down to, can you connect these people together in a way that helps them both? Can you introduce them to some sort of resource that's of use to them? And again, that's where those start to form these longer term connections of people who, it's not like you're looking for like tit for tat or quick return on, you know, I did something for them, expect something in back. It's just that that's going to lead to the sort of positive associations that longer term increase the likelihood of when they know of a possible introduction to make, they think of you as someone who's worth introducing somebody else to. That uh, just as an example of this. So uh, yesterday I was showing a game at PlayStation Experience, which the only way I was there to show that game was because I was introduced via an email from someone who I'd worked with as an animator long ago. Um, he had le left a positive impression with him, so got introduced to the other person. They need someone out here to show their game. And so while I was there, somebody else who was viewing the game, which isn't even a game I worked on, but showcasing it at the event, uh, their spouse is with them. And their spouse is trying to get into game music. She's done other kinds of music, music for television, commercials, whatever, uh, maybe some possible smaller films. And she's trying to figure out okay, how to get into game music. And is there, you know, some good meetups for these? And that's a case where I could help connect her to. I knew that there was actually a meetup run specifically by a game musician that has a lot of game audio people with it here in our area. And I was able to make that connection between them. Now, I don't think I'm going to work with that person directly. I don't necessarily uh, think it's going to help me to have made the connection directly. But it's a sort of example of where because I've been to these meetups, even though I figured out these sort of meetups weren't really necessarily a match for the kind of people I'm looking to network with for my line of work and so on. It was still useful to me to be able to help someone else with it because I had sort of done that exploration, was able to help bridge that gap, save someone else some time. And so point number two really is, can you find some way to add some value to somebody else's experience, make some introductions, etc. So again, you might even keep your feelers out for, okay, maybe this person isn't the right match for what you immediately need, but you know, you can kind of add them to your mental Rolodex, if that term makes any sense anymore, of maybe you, later on you find someone else who'd be a good partner for that person, a good graduate advisor for that person, a good employer for that person. You know, you meet someone else, they're like, oh, I really need someone who cares about AI. And you're like, actually, you know, I met this person who actually, that the, uh, let me get their contact information or we'll put you to in touch, do a quick email introduction. Uh, those kind of things can long-term be fruitful. And then thirdly, it's always going to involve uh, either effort, money, or both. 
Uh, and I say these because, you know, in the case of, the well, reason I say effort is it's a little bit like, not that it's a fault of the people, it's a little like panning for gold in terms of there's going to be lots of attempts for maybe relatively low yield. And again, this is actually one of these sort of things that in the business world, people are used to from notions like cold calls or direct mailings or uh, all kinds of sales work of like, even if you look at a popular business, a popular product, most people still just kind of aren't the customer at any given time. And in the same way as when you're out there kind of networking and so on, the effort part can be that you might have 100 conversations out of which 5, 10, maybe 15, maybe 20 really kind of stick or get to a next level of potentially being able to connect each other in the future to other opportunities. That's just kind of the nature of it. Now, the reason I say effort or money or both is that money in a way that like nobody wishes it was this way. Nobody designed it to be this way, but it acts a bit like a, it's a filter of sorts where if there's a free event, which is great, the free events exist, but the kind of people who are there and able to get out there and so on, it's totally unfiltered. It's literally people who may have no skin in the game, as they call it, in terms of aren't that heavily invested, aren't that serious about it, may just be kind of on a whim there and may be less of a useful connection to other folks who are, as comparison to when there's conferences of any type, uh, public events, whether it's PAX, GDC, Indicate, etc. And there's people who've gone to some sort of economic trouble and inconvenience to get there. They've made some trade-offs. Doesn't mean that they had a bunch of money. It means that they may have decided to spend their money on this instead of that in their life. But suddenly everyone in the conversation's that much more engaged in trying to like, they're there because they got a certain amount of momentum. They're there looking to get a certain amount of value out of the interactions. And you're just typically will find it's a game of percentages. There's still gonna be people in either crowd who are either different stages of their experience. But as a matter of percentages, the people you bump into might have already be a little further along in their path. And like I say, because quite literally, they're a little more invested in it. And it's not like you're necessarily buying connections. It's not like you are paying for access, but it is, again, think of it as kind of a filter. It can be a trade-off. And we say it's, you know, effort and or money. Uh, it's something which, you know, if you're not spending the money, it's going to take that much more effort to filter through the crowd. And then if you can spend some money to get past some of those filters, uh, that can sometimes reduce, not eliminate, certainly, some of the effort in terms of the likelihood of finding some people who are at least in the same sort of ballpark as what's a match for you. Remembering that if they're not matched for you, it might be still for somebody else. So that's kind of the uh, the three points. And the reason I mentioned both is because, again, even in the case where you are at conferences, uh, it is absolutely not enough to just be going to events, to just be present at events, to have gone somewhere and just kind of hung around in a corner. You've got to be actively initiating conversations, uh, you know, asking groups politely if you can join them. Uh, it really is a sort of experience where, and, and I think, uh, you know, I uh, had a... Had a Friend last yesterday at PSX, who I was able to make some introductions. We sort of chatted with people online or whatever. It was a little surprised at how social people were in terms of at this kind of setting, just between strangers. It really is like in that very first week of university or college, where everybody's kind of equally new and everybody's kind of there to meet each other and everybody's kind of there for the sake of getting to know each other. It's much easier to have those conversations. And the same thing actually absolutely happens at conferences and those kind of settings, where people know that they're there to network, they're there to meet each other, they're made to like meet some new folks. So it becomes a little easier there than it might be just in the general public of wandering around a shopping mall or a department store or something to start up a conversation because you know you already have some common ground. You know you have some sort of shared interest, some sort of common disciplines just by virtue of being there, but you still have to go out of your way to create those conversations, start those up. So it's always going to take some effort even if you are investing in your uh, professional development and network. But so that's the three things, right? It's going to take some patience. It's always longer term. It's going to involve uh, really proactively figuring out what can you do for the other people. It cannot be this selfish grab bag game of trying to see what you can get for yourself immediately. That's People tend to not make introductions for those kind of people. And then thirdly, it is uh, looking at the idea that it's going to either take a bunch of effort for some yield or to an extent when you can invest in networking opportunities. That's totally part of why people do that. that, that that's again, it's not some sort of like uh, abuse of money. That's not some sort of I don't know, conspiracy, that's just, again, the nature of people who are invested in it as opposed to people who are not yet at that level of momentum. Um, and that's something that everybody has to figure out kind of on their own path in terms of how and if they make those trade-offs. But it's something that obviously I've been going to conferences now for many years and longer term certainly have found the uh, a lot of the benefits and yield from it and growing my network. But that's it for the day. Thanks for always tuning in. Have an overview for tomorrow. Bye for now.